I'm Michelle Malott. Welcome to HDYI Labs, where we answer the question, how do you innovate? Here in the labs with me today is Charles Landry. He is one of the world's form foremost thought leaders on creativity and innovation, specifically as it relates to cities and placemaking. He's the author of The Art of City Making, and he's going to talk with us today a little bit about his perspective on creativity and innovation. Charles, I'm often asked about the difference between creativity and innovation, what the distinction is. Could you tell me a little bit about your perspective uh, between two, the differences between the two? Yeah, that's an interesting question because uh, I started with my own sort of thinking, always focusing on creativity itself initially. But then over the years, uh, I kept on thinking there are lots of these words, imagination, curiosity, creativity, innovation, and so on. And now I think that you have to sort of look at this like a seamless thread. And the first thing I think we need when we're thinking about innovation and creativity is the first step is really we've got to encourage ourselves to be curious. That seems to me to be the starting point because unless we're curious, inquisitive, nosy, or all of those sort of things, we don't sort of broaden the mind. So. If we think of a series of words, the first, I think, is really curiosity, encouraging curiosity. The second word, I think, is imagination, because if we're curious, we encourage ourselves to be imaginative, and imaginative obviously means sort of envisaging pictures in one's mind and all of those sorts of things. If we're curious and imaginative, then I think we're able to be creative. Now, those three things, all of them, are really sort of divergent processes. They sort of broaden out the thinking. They throw ideas in and so on and give us sort of images of whatever, you know, the future for example and so on. But then the key question is, that's all very well because we've got a bundle of ideas, these are creative ideas, some of which may be completely useless. They may be quite interesting to talk about, but the main question in the end for example, with a technology or with a social innovation or with a city, which is my particular interest, is how do you turn these things into reality? So what I think happens then, at that point, is you've got this divergent thing, and then, at that moment, you have to go through a reality checker. And that reality checker is really the process of taking creative ideas and turning them into innovation some sort of way. So let's say you've got eight ideas, they sort of reduce probably down to one perhaps, there's perhaps only one. And the reality checker, what that is, is essentially putting in criteria. One of them might be to say, it's got to make money. Okay, that's not the only way to be innovative, but that's one way of then reducing the ideas down. Another thing you might have as a criterion might be to say uh, it's got to be very powerful socially or something. So anyway, what that process does, it is convergent. It oh. reduces ideas down and narrows them down into a sort of focus, out of which you can create an innovation. Now, when you ultimately then, let's say, patent it or something like that, that might become the invention. So I think the way of looking at it really is to say curiosity imagination, creativity, which is sort of divergent, then it narrows down into turning that into an innovation and then an invention. Thank you very much. The thing I like about your approach really is that so often when we think of innovation, we're thinking of engineering innovation, technical innovation and stuff like that. But the actual deeper questions is really about the people who are doing this, what they feel like emotionally and so on. And I think one of the things one's got to remember, and I think that's what you do very well, is understand how change happens within people, how they change their mindset. And changing a mindset to be open and, you know, creating possibilities and so on is often something that engenders fear in people by definition, isn't it? Because you're doing something different than you did before. And I think how that happens is very much initially at the emotional level. So it's very important to think of the psychology of people and all of that and to try and nurture that to sort of bring them forward, if I can put it like that. Because it's only later on 
that once they've changed emotionally and they've felt things through their gut and viscerally, that they're then willing to sort of accept the sort of rational consequences of that. But too often what we do is we talk in metrics and rational thought and all of that, but it's very difficult to make people change their mind just through facts and rational stuff is usually engendered through emotional work. So without getting too process oriented, it's very important to really operate at that level first. And then once people feel comfortable in an emotional sense about the changing world and so on, they're much more willing uh, to go with the change. And I suppose the key sentence is to say is to go with the grain of someone's you know, mental state and so on. And once they feel comfortable in that, uh, it's much more easy to do the sort of bigger things w w which, which we're all after, which is making the world a better place. Thank you very much, Charles. Charles, to all of our innovators out there, do you have any words of wisdom or advice that you could, could give? I don't know if I've got any words of wisdom, but nevertheless, uh, the way I look at it, and I'm normally working in cities, and so what you've got is different people with different interests, you know, someone might be a business person, a local leader, whatever, you get the idea. But one of the problems when people are trying to innovate or think afresh, for example, about the resources and the possibilities of a city, and that's the same if you're thinking of a project or a technology or something, is that people too quickly go from the bigger picture and zoom down in the detail too quickly or they confuse these different levels and I think it's incredibly important to try and stick at this higher level at least for a while before you get too practical because if you get too practical too quickly quite often what happens is you're always excluding possibilities and my general approach is to let some sort of free flow happen and then we can sort of I suppose you could say, think forward and plan backwards. Mm -hmm. Now again, obviously some of the ideas won't work, but what is really important is it's very difficult to get people who have jobs, who've got timetables, who've got deadlines, who've got money worries and all of that, that all of this stuff is crowding into them already and they're getting drowned in detail. And in the sort of work that I think this website is about, is really helping people to just sort of stay relaxed, open for as long as possible because we've always got the opportunity to get really realistic mm -hmm. because of course no creative process is interesting if it doesn't happen in reality but let's not switch to reality too quickly.